Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adamo Baseball, where I'm your host, Adamo. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about Baltimore Orioles manager, Brandon Hyde. So, there's not really a whole lot necessarily to talk about. I do respect him. Um, he took over for Buck Showalter in 28... 2019. 2019? No, 2018. 2019, yeah. The Baltimore Orioles finished with a franchise record 115 losses after the 2018 season, and the Orioles decided to move on from Buck Showalter, who was the first manager to lead the Orioles to a division title and an American League Championship Series in a very long time in 2014 and to the playoffs in 2016 as wild card team. That 2014 team was really good. It was the first time that the Orioles had won the division since 1997, and it was the first time they made the American League Championship game or series since 1983 when. You know, the last time they won it all. Um, they lost to the to the pay, pennant winners, Kansas City Royals, who in turn lost to the World Series champs, New San Francisco Giants. Well, ever since then, the Orioles kind of just declined as a team. And they started, started selling away a lot of their talent. 2018, they traded away Manny Machado for five prospects with the intent of trying to rebuild. It, it was very on-the-surface trade. There wasn't much convolution there. Well, losing the third most losses in Major League Baseball history behind only those three Tigers and I think it was the 1929 Philadelphia Athletics, Oh, fourth most. Also the 1962 New York Mets. They still hold the record for most losses in a season at 120. The Tigers lost 119 in 2003. And then that athletics team, I think, lost 116. And the 2018 Orioles lost 115. So the Orioles' ownership decided to move into a different direction, and they hired Brandon Hyde. So while it was his first, first full-time gig as a manager, it was not the first game he ever managed. In 2011, for one day, he managed the Miami Marlins. Uh, they lost a 2-1 to game against the Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays were really good at that time. Like, I'm not saying that they're not good now. You know, you'd be the judge. But the Rays were really good at that time. And he managed... He managed the Marlins when they lost 2-1. to one On June 20th. It was because their their manager was fired early in the season, and then Rodriguez unexpectedly resigned on June nineteenth. So June twentieth, Brandon Hyde, being the interim bench coach, was promoted to the manager for a day, and then he resumed his bench coach duties after that. Well, he ended up going on to be the bench coach for the Chicago Cubs, which I was actually under the wrong impression as to who he had managed for before, or who he'd been a bench coach for before that. So it was good to get that cleared up. Uh, he was the Chicago Cubs bench coach for a while, part of that 2016 World Series team. And the O's decided to take a chance on him. 
And 2019, he certainly had his work cut out for him. Um, he was one of the guys that got John Means to be as good as John Means is. They went from 115 losses to 108. 108 losses on the surface sounds really bad. Well, there were bright spots on that team that make you go, oh, okay. Maybe he actually is a pretty good coach or manager. Because he had, I think, three or four guys have 30-plus home runs. Trey Mancini, uh, Rio Ruiz. I think Anthony Santander did as well. And John Means was the runner-up for the American League Rookie of the Year. He was a good enough bench coach that he was able to make all those things happen. Obviously, when you lose 108 games, you got your work cut out for you. But he took it and has definitely improved that team all the way across the board. And then last year, 2020... Now, I keep going on and on and on about how 2020 is an aberration. You can't assume anything based off of last year. However, with the expanded postseason to eight games, uh, he or up until about the last two weeks of the season, the Orioles were in the discussion for the playoffs. They finished the season 25 and 35. But he was in the discussion for getting the O's into the playoffs, as were the Tigers. And neither of those teams were seen anywhere close to being competitive. Well, Brandon Hyde made that discussion happen. And yeah, they finished 10 games under 500. Um, 25 wide 60, that's... I think it's like a 400... Win percentage, something like that. It wasn't... Yeah, I think it's about 400. But it's not exactly fantastic. But at the same time, considering where they had been the previous two years, he he definitely made that team better. And this year, the O's have started the season with a sweep of the Red Sox. And technically, the O's are in first place in the American League East. Now, granted, it's the first week of the season, and I'll have a full update on that on Friday. But it looks like Brandon Hyde actually has done a pretty good job on his teams. In fact, I saw an article when I was doing the research for this episode saying that that Brandon Hyde believes that John Means is an ace as well. I'm not just thinking this myself, but he's treating John Means like an ace because, well, he is. So it looks like, so while Brandon Hyde's career has been short as a manager, hence this episode's probably not going to longer or run too much longer, he has definitely improved the team and definitely has a chance at making this team better going forward so i his win percentage right now is only 360 but it looks like he's got the orioles going in the right direction at least for right now i don't know the length of his contract he's probably got two more years realistically because 2020 pra i don't know if that's going to count for a full season it realistically probably will but I think the O's should at least try to pick up his contract if he has the O's continuing to win this year. As in, if they exceed 70-plus wins, not only is that a substantial improvement from where they have been over the last you know, five years, it goes to show that he actually knows what he's doing. And that he's just what the O's needed. Nothing against Buck Showalter. Okay, that guy worked some miracles. 
But Brandon Hodge, it looks like he's working some miracles too. So, again, there's not a whole lot to go on, but at the same time, I think that this does a good job of breaking down at least a little bit of his experience as a manager because he doesn't have all that much experience. It's not going to be like when I break down Tony LaRusso where it's going to take like three hours. So, with that being said, oh, if you, if you have something else you want to mention about him, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on my, co on my podcast, come over to my show on my YouTube channel and leave a comment down below. I got my Twitter fixed, Adamo Baseball. First thing is going to pop up. Adamo Baseball or Adamo or at Adamo Baseball One. You can at me, positive, negative, I don't care. I just want to know that you're listening. So, with that being said, thank you for listening. Cheers until next time.